Let's talk briefly now about random errors. As we saw in the first video of the series, the effect of random errors on a data set is to spread out the data. So a data set free of random errors would give the same measurement every time. There would essentially be no distribution of measurements about a central mean value. But when we introduce random error into the mix, and random error is one of those inevitable facts of life, what we end up with is a distribution that exhibits a spread of values, with the width of that spread being related to the standard deviation of the set of measurements. So we can recognize random error within a data set by calculating the standard deviation of the measurements. Now, what does random error look like in the laboratory? Well, unlike systematic error, it's not terribly easy to spot a lot of the time. Because random errors happen due to random fluctuations. This word random really means that the errors are unpredictable and involve fluctuations that we really can't control. So they can be difficult to pinpoint. However, there are some things we can say in general about random errors, and we can identify, for example, the device that's causing a random error without knowing the exact details of the mechanism that's going on. So, for example, if we're using an instrument, uh, let's say we're using a balance to make some mass measurements. Most instruments these days, in fact, almost all instruments these days that are worth anything, are digital. They use electronic mechanisms to obtain and record their measurements. But this means that they're tied to the power grid and fluctuations in the power grid. Maybe if the energy is generated through a hydroelectric power plant, for example, fluctuations in the water flow can cause fluctuations in the voltage and current coming to the device and that can cause fluctuations in the mass readings. And these are random fluctuations that we really can't control. In fact, inside the device, you, you may not even notice this happening, right? Because the measurement may appear to stabilize, but inside the device, what it's constantly doing is averaging over time the values that it's seeing when you place something on the balance. So what you're getting is actually a mean, and the balance is throwing away a lot of the randomness that's inherent in things like this. But if you do many measurements, for example, on different balances, you'll notice that some fluctuation comes into play. Another common example of random error that's very relevant to chemistry are what we might call losses. And losses refer to lost solid or liquid that essentially leaves our grasp because of random events. Things like random evaporation of liquids is, a, is an issue that can cause random error. We can't really control the number of molecules flying off of a sample at a given point in time. Um, solids blowing away, solids spilling out in a microscopic sense of a vessel in which we've, we've contained uh, the solid can come into play. These are random errors in the sense that we can't really control them but they do affect, across multiple measurements, the width of our distribution. Minimizing random errors essentially amounts to being careful. So the best advice I can give you to minimize random errors is just to be careful and be mindful of the fact that things like shaky hands and electrical fluctuations, vibrations due to anything from the air conditioning to a rock concert going on across the quad can influence our measurements and cause widening in the spread of our measurements.